At the Last Supper, Jesus says to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of Truth, he will guide you to all truth. The most fundamental truth of the Christian faith is what we celebrate today, the dogma of who God is, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Those are the simple facts, the mysterious facts. Our knowledge of the Trinity might go only as far as St. Patrick's three-leaf clover, or we might be able to understand some of the readings and reflections of the early church fathers when they say that the Father eternally begets the Son, that the Holy Spirit spirates from the Father and the Son, that the Father and the Son share the same thoughts, the same mind, choose the same things so perfectly, their love is so perfect, that even though they're three, you can say they're actually one, one God. And when you read the early church fathers, whether you understand them or not, if we just stop where St. Patrick tells us about the three-leaf clover, the reality is that we all fall short of understanding God as a trinity of persons. The danger, this is what I would like to speak about today, the danger is in treating God as just a fact. For example, I can point to someone and say, female, five foot, four inches, 135 pounds, three children, five grandchildren, spouse deceased, 75 years old. Do I really know the person? No. Behind, behind those brown eyes is a mystery, desires, dreams, disappointments, triumphs, hopes, hurts, fears, goals. If we know these, then we're starting to know the real person. We need to get beyond the simple facts, one God, three persons, and get to know the persons and the mystery. For example, if some preteen girls are having a slumber party, as soon as the lights go out, the facts fall away. Five foot, one inch, 98 pounds, brown hair, which is a little greasy in the evening, and three zits all on the left side of the face. <laughs> and then in the darkness, they start talking about who they like, who they would like to be someday their greatest hurts, or their more recent hurts, and on and on. They are not experiencing the mere facts, but the mystery inside each person. The Blessed Trinity, don't stop at the facts. Get to know the persons. Do you see the Father as the one who created you, provides for you, adopted you as his very own child, and has a place in heaven for you? Do you see the Son of God as your eldest brother and friend who died for you and for the entire world? Do you see him coming to you through scripture, through sacraments? Do you see the Holy Spirit as the one who sanctifies you and recreates you? Do you see the Spirit as your own soul and energy life force? Do you see the Spirit as the kindest, most gentle, most patient friend you will ever have? We have to believe and be willing to die for the facts of the Trinity. One God, three persons. But we also have to be able to move beyond the facts and get to know the persons. When we pray, do we talk specifically to the Father? 
to Jesus, the Son of God? Have we ever talked directly to the Holy Spirit when talking to each divine person, get to know each person? What are the Father's dreams for you? What are his disappointments? What are Jesus' triumphs? And what are his triumphs in you? What are his hurts? And have any of them come from us? What are the Holy Spirit's hopes for you? And for your place in the world and in his plan of salvation, what are the Spirit's goals? The Blessed Trinity. We can never fully understand the mystery of one God in three persons, but we will understand more and more if we move beyond the facts and get to know the individual persons.